Okay, guys. So uh, now we are going to discuss about the URL filtering, right? So first we will talk about the basics regarding the URL filtering. What do you understand by the URL filtering, right? So uh, let's say you have your firewall right here, right? And uh, this is your LAN infrastructure. And the firewall is connected to internet. So over internet, uh, we know there are multiple websites, millions of websites are there, right? And uh, we have different, different categories for each of them, right? Uh, like social networking, dating, right? Uh, computer and info like this, right? Hacking, pornography, adult, conf adult content, right? So uh, being a network administrator or a security administrator in your organization, it's your responsibility to block the unwanted URLs, right? So that if you're, if somebody is connected within your LAN, if they are going over the internet, their traffic is filtered by the firewall, right? If, you tr if they try to open up any unwanted, a website or any malicious website, any, uh, you know, uh, not permitted website, that traffic will be dropped by the firewall, right? So how can we do that? So we can do that with the help of the URL filtering. So URL filtering gives you the liberty to block the malicious websites or the unwanted websites based on their category, right? So if you are a, uh, administrator you need not to add specific website into the block list you can right away call the action on that particular category whether it is allowed it is block or you would like to generate the alert or you would like to give warning to the uh, user and then user can override your decision by uh, you know selecting the override button then uh, you he can also uh, you can also provide him the continue uh, button so that you can generate the log uh, whosoever is going over those websites, right? So these are the options available in the Palo Alto firewalls. Similarly, Palo Alto offers you two integrations. Either you can use PAN database or you can say PAN DB URL filtering or you can use Bright Cloud, right? but only one will be active at a time, right? So PANDB, if your license is URL 4, if your license is ending with URL 4, it means it is for PANDB. And if your license is ending with URL 2, it means it is for Bright Cloud. So you can activate only one at a time, right? And in recent days, PANDB has improvised, I mean, it has been improved you know, to, to an extent, I would say, and uh, now it is performing much better than Bright Cloud, right? Because PANDB integration with PANOS is very much good as compared to Bright Cloud. Earlier, Bright Cloud uh, database was very good. It was having the, uh, you know, categories defined properly and uh, firewall used to get the uh, input from the data uh, from the Bright Cloud uh, very well. And it used to take the actions very good. But uh, right now, PANDB is also updated properly and it also identifies the URL to their respective categories. And, you know, as per the defined security policy, firewall can take the action on them. Exactly. And uh, another thing is, since we all are aware that, you know, all the websites these days, they are running on 443, right? So it becomes difficult for firewall to, you know, block the particular URLs, right? If their domain information is not clear inside the SNI field, right? So for port AD, your URL filtering works totally fine, whatever you have defined. But for 443, it works really good if you do SSL decryption, right? Because to get the control over the web traffic, you need to integrate your URL filtering 
along with the app id right so let's say you want to block the entire social networking right or let's say inside social networking you need to just allow facebook for your users and inside facebook you just need to allow facebook home page that's it users cannot play games they cannot do chat right you want to block all of these things right so with the help of the url filtering you can block the rest of the social networking sites and with the help of the app id you can control these things you can block the games you can block the chat you can only allow facebook based application right see the only limitation with the app, app id is you know the uh, application based filtering is we have only 4000 entries in the applipedia right so only 4000 well known applications are there but when we talk about the websites number of websites it is in millions right so we don't have application uh, signatures available inside applipedia for all the websites so rest of the websites either they will be considered as web browsing their application will be considered as web browsing or it will be considered as ssl right so if it is considered as ssl in that case your app id uh, based rules they fail right because inside ssl what is going on you don't know right and uh, you can filter out these ssl related websites based on sni field because inside your client hello during the ssl handshake there is one extension which is server name indication and it contains the domain name so let's say you are making connection with facebook.com so it has that particular facebook.com inside it and uh, you know your firewall does the uh, pattern matching based on sni and it can block the facebook if it is called inside the rule right but the only problem is with the specific uris right so let's say we have two terms one is url another one is uri so url is uniform resource locator and uri means uniform resource identifier right so uh, let's say i have posted one video on youtube right and the uri for that video is youtube.com/xyz right whatever it is and you know that this video is uh, promoting terrorism or something like that so your administrator has decided to block this specific video only not the entire website right so in your firewall you have the liberty to block this particular uri this specific uri right so what will happen your lan users they will be able to open up the youtube right but this specific video will be blocked for them they won't be able to play this specific video right this will be blocked so for this you need ssl decryption right because if you will not configure the ssl decryption what will happen if somebody has initiated the connection to the youtube.com if somebody is trying to access this particular uri what will happen first it will have a tcp three way handshake with the youtube right and after that it will start with the ssl handshake and inside ssl handshake in client hello it will send this sni and sni will be carrying the information youtube.com and firewall has allowed the youtube.com 
right you you have not blocked the entire youtube you just need to block this particular video that's it nothing else so you have given access to this particular youtube website so firewall will do the matching and it will come to know oh it is going to youtube allow the traffic right and this is how the user will be able to communicate with the youtube and your application will be as identified as youtube base because this is the well known uh, website right and rest of the traffic is ssl so we won't be able to see what is exactly going inside the http get rig packet because after ssl handshake your http get will be encrypted so if you want to block this entire uri you need ssl decryption so that is the only reason your url filtering works fine with ssl decryption works fine with ssl decryption so if you are not doing the decryption you won't be getting the granular control over the web traffic okay so let me show you that if you go to uh, device if you go to login into your web ui go to device go to licenses and there you can verify the license available for pan uh, url filtering so right now i'm using pan db url filtering right i'm not using uh, bright cloud and you can see the status is active okay similarly uh, for bright cloud you will be able to see that and uh, there you will see active status as no right because at a time you can only activate one particular license not two right both of them cannot be allowed at the same time only one can be allowed right similarly uh, if you go here and if you see what are all the options we have uh, available as a action on the urls so palo alto is going to offer you these actions which you can configure over the uh, over the uh, categories first one is block so block means i'm going to generate the log so your log will be generated and url access will be blocked that particular url will be blocked then another one is alert so log generated but access to url is allowed okay then we have allow so here access to url is allowed but we are not going to generate any log but no log will be generated the next section available is continue so log generated but access to the url is temporarily blocked till the customer ask till the customer acknowledges to bypass the block okay so the warning message will be given 
and if he selects okay i'm okay to visit so we are going to generate the log that this particular user has bypassed the warning and he went to the website then we have override so override says we are going to generate the log log generated and url is blocked but a password is required by the user to override the policy that blocks this url okay so um let's go to the firewall and let's verify all of these options which we have inside the firewall right so you can go to objects and you can go to security profiles we have url filtering here right and uh, you can select your default uh, or you can have your custom categories as well we will discuss later on we have uh, url category objects where you can define your uh, you know uh, custom urls right so you can create your custom categories so go to default and here if you see let's say we have this particular category abortion and it is allowed so i want to block it uh this is the default we cannot uh, make changes inside it go to your custom category and let's say for abortion okay so this is read only it has been pushed from the panorama so i'm managing my firewalls from panorama so let me open up the panorama and from there i'll show you so the settings are same i mean it is available inside the objects only but right now you can see it is read only or we can do one thing meanwhile panorama is opening up we can add a new one uh custom block profile right so here uh, you have your custom category available dxc block you can uh, set the action so you can see alert allow block continue override and none so uh, i want to block it then you have abortion block it then you have abused drug block it adult block then you have alcohol and tobacco block then you have options block business and economy is allow command and control block then we have computer and internet info allowed content delivery networks block copyright block cryptocurrency is allow dating is block dynamic dns allow educational institutions allowed uh, entertainment and arts allowed extremism extremism block then financial services allow gambling is block right games block then we have government graveware block hacking block right health and insurance high risk high risk websites block home and garden hunting and fishing insufficient content internet communications telephony right uh, then uh, low risk malware block then you can block nudity then you can block phishing websites you can block sex related content then you can block uh, weapon related things right so these categories 
so whatever you are all going to fall into these categories firewall is going to take the action as per the defined action here right so rest of them is allowed and for social networking as well you can set your action as block so you can do a search here so it is not coming no it should let me do a search again so social networking you can set the action as block right and then you can clear your filter so i have defined the action right click okay custom block profile now go to policies create a rule url category block so there are two options in the palo alto firewalls to do this thing one is you explicitly define one rule right where you define your uh, source and destination and your users on which you need to apply this particular rule right and then you can call your uh, you know specific uh, categories and then you can define the action as block on them right this is one way so you need to create the rule you need to call the categories here right and you can take the action as block right D deny allow drop whatever it is right this is one type but we will not go with this type uh, because it will not give you any warning or something like that no redirect will be allowed to you because you are blocking it with the help of the rule and it will uh, these these actions will override the uh, actions which we have studied inside the url uh, category right so how you can do it you can do it with the help of the security profile so in the internet access rule which is there to allow the internet for your users if you go to actions your action is allow but in the profile when you select the profile go to url filtering and select your profile as custom block block profile which we have just created right and click okay so if you are going to click okay now this particular url profile has been applied to it so you can see here url filtering custom block profile has been applied to this particular rule right and you need to make sure that there is no other rule above to this rule which is uh, you know uh, permitting your traffic otherwise this rule will not take hit and users will use that particular rule and they will visit the internet right so now just do the commit so meanwhile this commit is taking place so this is the user which is sitting in the lan so right now if you open up the uh, websites here so let me just log in so right now you can see uh, this user is able to open up the facebook.com right and uh, once this commit will be successful after that this facebook will become unavailable to this user right we will get the warning that uh, we will get the page from the firewall that, that this particular url has been blocked right so if you are going to create a rule and your rule is going to define the action on that particular category in that case you don't get the uh, response pages uh, you know pages that this particular uh, website is blocked or what it will simply show you uh, you know uh, your service is unavailable right but if you want to uh, share the pages with the user you can do that with the help of the security profiles okay so inside security profile enable your url filtering and call your custom category which you have created so once it is done now let's go to your machine right close the browser so now if this user will try to uh, visit facebook.com he won't be able to do that so whatever categories we have blocked this user won't be able to visit those particular websites so those websites if they fall into those particular categories the access will be blocked so if i open up the facebook now so you can see web page blocked so web page you are trying to visit has been blocked in accordance with the company policy 
please contact your system administrator if you believe this is an error and it has provided you the url and it has given you the category right and your ip address similarly uh, if you go to a, any other website so we have not blocked the youtube.com so you can open up the youtube so you can see you have the internet access right but now we have done the filtering based on urls and based on the category so selected websites are blocked and rest of the communication is open so this is how you are controlling your network right similarly if you try to open up any um, any dating website that also has been blocked right so website block right so this is how you are controlling your internet access and if you want to see the logs just go to monitor go to url filtering and here you will be able to see the logs right what are all the urls which are getting blocked and what are all the urls which are getting allowed right so you can see um for dating so it was tinder x you can see the action block url right application was web browsing then similarly for youtube base uh action was block url no it should not be block url uh, it is wrong here it must be something else mm, let me see another logs for facebook so here if you see facebook when you tried visiting facebook action was block url right and uh, you can see the detailed information by clicking on the magnifier so application face facebook base action block the url this was the session id this is the rule id and this is the rule internet access right so we have applied the uh, url filtering profile on the internet access rule right and uh, you can see the details here and if you feel like that this particular url has been uh, identified into a wrong category so you can click here and you can uh, request for the change in the category so you can submit your details that it should belong to this particular category and firewall is identifying it wrongly and this request will go to the polo alto's backend team to uh, review it and update it inside the correct category right similarly we have a website as well where you can go and you can submit this request okay then if you want to do the block based on the security rule so the uh, message you are getting in this particular machine that website is blocked these are uh, response pages it will not come in that particular case because your security rule action will override that particular action right so if i will create a rule based on security uh based on the url category let's say block category this is my rule name my source is trust if i'm coming from trust if i'm going to untrust my category is let's say i want to block uh any category uh let's say news right so i want to block news go to action and my action is deny right okay now block pull this particular rule at the top right so that it gets evaluated before internet access do the commit and let's wait for this commit to complete meanwhile if you see i will be able to open up the uh, news websites so right now if i go to cnn or bbc it will open up for me right because right now uh, we are not doing any block after this commit gets successful you know the new rule will be updated inside the running configuration 
of the firewall right because whatever changes we do here that is uh, that changes are inside the candidate configuration right so now it is getting populated to the running configuration once that particular uh, running configuration has been updated with the new rules you will see that new uh, these websites they will become unreachable so you will not get any uh, uh, web page like this that this web page has been blocked you will simply get request timeout that service is not available why because now you are doing the blocking basis on security rule action right you are not taking action basis on the security profile your url filtering profile you are taking the action basis on your security rule that is the reason it will show you that uh, you know the uh, url the service is unavailable or service is not reachable right so if you go here and if you now try to open up let's say bbc so if i try to open up bbc it will request timeout right because we have done the blocking basis on my security rule right so i won't be able to open up the bbc home page and if you directly go to this https bbc.com uh, so it will simply time out right so web page is not available so this is the difference between the security based rule blocking and your security profile based uh, blocking similarly uh, if you see here in url filtering we have created this particular thing and let's say uh, for certain categories you want to test different uh, you know action so alert is simple it will generate the log but url access will be provided let's try the continue block we have already seen allow is simple it will allow the flow let's try continue and override right so uh, if you go to any uh, let's say dating so here my action is continue right so continue means that the warning will be presented and it will depend upon the user to bypass that right so let's go ahead and commit the change so right now if you see here if i will try to open up tinder.com or something like that it is right away blocked right it is right away blocked so if you have seen inside youtube certain things have been blocked that that was considered as a uh, social networking that is the reason we were able to see uh, youtube uh, you know because a website it communicates with different websites to load the things properly right so if you see here the entire youtube is not getting loaded properly because it might be possible uh, when it is trying to communicate with other websites they might fall into uh you know other categories which we are blocking and that was the only reason we were able to see those logs so you can see it is not getting loaded properly right because uh when it is trying to communicate with other services those services maybe they are not uh, secure or you know they might be identified in a particular category which we are blocking so right now if you go to tinder so it is giving you that uh, the site cannot be reach uh, just a minute let me just see the website uh, url so if i go to tinder it is giving me this spidd protocol error for tinder as well that doesn't come inside the news i believe it is a different category facebook we are getting the blog okay uh let me just do one thing let me disable this particular rule which we have created the security category based right let me disable it okay i have disabled this rule so that we can see the actions which we have defined on the uh, urls because right now i can see uh, tinder has also become you know unreachable 
so we should get the web page like this because we have set the action on dating websites uh, dating category as continue i mean you will get the warning and you will get the option to continue if you bypass that so right now if i check my monitor logs for url filtering so for tinder yeah we are not getting any log here right you can see facebook you can see youtube related websites when they were communicating right so google base google base facebook base blog 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 right so these are the categories due to which it, it was getting blocked content delivery networks content delivery networks so it depends upon the configuration what categories you have allowed what categories you have blocked and for tinder now if you go to traffic you might be able to see that it was getting blocked due to a uh, security rule so youtube base web browsing and here you will be able to see that if you search more logs facebook 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 and uh, you need to identify the uh, you know tinder ip and then you can apply the destination based ip filter here and you can search the logs okay so i think my commit is complete now yeah it's complete so go to device again and just refresh your connection so you can see now you are getting this particular uh, response page and it says that if you click continue to proceed to the page this action will be logged right so right now if i go to firewall and if i go to url filtering and if i will uh, filter out my uh, urls right so i have uh, selected this particular url tinder right and the action is block continue right so if the user is clicks on continue we will log that particular thing that this user has went to this particular website so if you click continue to proceed this action will be logged so let's go to continue and if i go continue this website has been open up for me right and if i will uh, refresh here so you can see the website has been load, loaded action was continue 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 right and uh, if you want to see the logs you can just click on the magnifier just to see the detail about the uh, you know the url so log action category right and uh, if you see here ip address right and uh, your we are not doing the user identification right now it is not enabled on this particular uh, zone that is the reason we are not getting the source user details otherwise you would have got the name as well who visited that particular website so once we will turn on the user identification then you will be able to see this as well right so now you can see we have set the action to continue and user is able to open up the website right so similarly the last option is override if you want to override the uh, you know the action so you need to go to device you need to first define the password so go to device go to setup and go to content id right and then url admin override option here it is and you know these are the timeout values so url continue timeout is 1 minute so for 1 minute this user has access to the uh, tinder right he can do whatever he wants this website will be open up for 1 minute and after 1 minute it will again give you the warning that this is blocked if you want to continue your action will be logged then url admin override timeout value then url admin log logout timeout value right these are the timers which you can define here similarly uh, url admin override right so you can see that there is a password already defined right and uh, redirect address from the gateway interface we are sending the response page and then you need to enter that particular password then only you will be able to do that 
again uh, we are not able to add anything here because this is being managed from the panorama so let me do the push from the panorama because few settings are being managed from the panorama so panorama is the management server from where we are managing our devices right so in uh, production environments you will see this particular thing that all the devices are being managed by the panorama and we will be doing the uh, configuration in the panorama uh, here are a few things are, are different like uh, you need to define the templates template stack device device groups right all of this information you need to define so we will discuss about this when we are going to study about the panorama right now just have a look because my device is getting managed from the panorama i'm unable to add this particular setting locally right so i need to do this setting from panorama only so you can modify the uh, timeouts if required but right now i'm not able to add it from here i will add it from the panorama and then from there you know we will see that uh, if user has the password they can open up those urls if they don't have the password they cannot open up the urls right so let's close the browser and let's see whether our timeout is working or not so let's try to open up the tinder again So right now it is working, but once it will be time out, after that uh, we won't be able to, you know, open up the website. So close it, wait for one or two minutes, and after that you will see Tinder will become an again temporary. Temporarily it will be blocked until unless you click on continue. So meanwhile let's go to device, select your template, right? and inside the template just go to your setup go to content id and url admin override so just define the password right and if you want to use the ssl tls server profile you can do it because you get the warnings right whenever we are redirecting it so if you are redirecting it so now your request will be redirected from this particular address right this is my gateway if you want to keep it transparent so user will think that you know it is directly coming from the uh, tinder server that is but that is not the case right so if you want to tell your uh, users that you know from this particular interface it is coming so you can provide your gateway uh, address here or you can define your domain which we will be doing in case of captive portal you can do, define the domain as well and you can create the certificates to validate that particular domain so that user doesn't get untrusted warnings in the browsers so right now we will keep it transparent click ok and simply commit and push to the devices so this setting will be will appear here right so once this commit and push will be successful from the firewall this setting will be available here okay let's verify again if tinder is still available So it's still opening up. I think it is getting cached. Let me open it up in the uh, incognito. See, it is blocked. So at that time it got cached. That is the reason it was opening. So again, if I will click on continue, my access will be open up for one minute because this is what I have defined inside the timeout, right? So this is how we control. So let's wait for this push. So this commit and push has been successfully done on the panorama. And you will see inside the device, if you go the task that I have received the commit from the panorama, right? Uh, you can see 
so right now this download is going on once it will be done after that this commit will be starting right so signature download is going on because we can schedule the signature download so i have already done it for every uh, you know uh, it is done at uh, 0 0 hours so that is the reason signatures are getting downloaded and getting installed inside my uh, data plane so once this job will be done my previous commit it will also be done so let's waste wait for these tasks to be completed and then we will verify the changes So whenever you are doing the troubleshooting or whenever you are configuring the panel, um, URL filtering, and if you want to do the testing, always open up the pages in the incognito mode. And this is what I was talking about, right? Uh, the redirection. So you can see right now it is appearing that the Tinder server is redirecting you, right? Because we have set the mode as transparent. But if you can do, if you have selected it redirect, it will come from your IP address or from your layer three service from where you are redirecting it, right? So we will see it inside the case of Kepri portal. Uh, another thing is, let me just see if this particular task is completed. Okay, now it is uh, activating the antivirus. Commit is complete, download is complete. Yeah, so if you now refresh, it will ask you to enter the password. Oh, let me just do one thing. Let me open up the browser again, incognito window. Yeah. So here now it will ask you to, uh, no, it has not taken the effect. Let me verify. So if I will refresh here, okay. Now we have not defined the action to be, uh, we have not defined the action to, uh, action to be as, uh, you know, uh, to be as a uh, override and, uh, why this particular setting has not come here? Hmm. We have done the commit. Commit was successful. Okay, let me override the password here. And uh, okay. Meanwhile, this commit is going on. Go to your objects, go to URL filtering, and inside your block, you need to set the action on dating category as override. So what will happen after user is going to submit the credential, we're going to allow the, uh, you know, communication. So you have defined it. So this commit is queued because, you know, right now this antivirus auto commit is taking place and uh, let's wait for it. Once it will be done, then this new commit will be uh, the previous one where I have updated the password that will take place. And then we will do the new commit, right? If right away I will do it, it will be queued as well, right? So inside the commit walkthrough, I have told you this about, right? Uh, initially your jobs, they get queued, right? So right now this job is getting performed. We are updating the antivirus signatures in the data plane with the help of the auto commit process. And then these two commits, they are in 
queue right now they cannot be processed until unless this will be completed right so let's wait for it once it will be done you can see it is completed now this commit has been started and once it will be committed then this commit will start so let's wait for it okay so now you can see that both the commit jobs they are completed right so now let's go to the device and verify what is happening so now it will ask you to enter the password if you want to visit that particular website right so if you go here uh, first it is giving you the warning that your connection is not uh, valid right because we need to define all of this uh, you know uh, we have not because right now it is giving us the firewall uh, certificate, right? We have not generated any certificate. We have not defined any SSL TLS profile, which we will be doing inside the Kipti portal. I'll show you that. So then you will not get these uh, warnings, right? So now you can see web page is being logged, right? And category is this and this. If you wanna go to this particular web page, you need to enter the password, right? So if I will enter the password, before entering the password, let's verify the logs on the firewall. So if we go to monitor, you go to URL filtering logs. So right now you can see dating, Tinder, and your action is block override. So right now I have blocked it, but it is override if I have the password. So let me enter the password and see if I'm able to open up the page. So if I have entered the password, this web page is open for me now, right? So if I will refresh here, so now you will see that it is override. Action is override, okay? Similarly, uh, you can create your custom categories, right? Let's say you have your own uh, portals which are not available over the internet, right? And nobody is aware of those portals. So you can create your custom categories and you can call them uh, inside your rules. Right, so let's say uh, I wanna name it as test category, right? And it will be type of URL list, right? So you can provide the URL details here. So um, make sure that you don't enter HTTP, HTTPS, right? Right away, start typing your URLs. So click on add. And let's say um, you want to block um, CNN.com or you want to allow CNN.com from your uh, rest of the websites because we have blocked the news. Uh, no, uh, news is that rule I have disabled it. So let's do one thing. Let's create one allow list and let's create one uh, block list, right? And uh, if you want to allow certain URLs from the blocked categories that will become part of your allow list. And if you want to block certain websites from your allowed categories, that will become part of your block list. And then we will see the lookup, the entire lookup inside the Palo Alto firewalls, how your uh, URL flow lookup is defined and how it evaluates, right? And which uh, particular list will be evaluated first, right? We will discuss that as well. So let's define um, so right now i am i am blocking facebook.com so i want to allow facebook right facebook.com so first type this and then uh, you know you can add forward slash now forward slash means uh, it will you know it will do the exact match right it will do the exact match of this particular URL string, which you are defining here. And if it will be matched, it will be uh, the appropriate action will take effect, whatever you're going to define on this particular URL list. Okay. Then we have uh, child domains as well. So if you want to blog, if you want to allow child domain as well, then you can uh, have star dot facebook.com. And then you can have forward slash, right? So similarly, support.cisco.com and software.cisco.com, right? If you want to allow the child domains as well, so you can call this as well, uh, right? Like this. Then um, 
you can call the respective uh, country details as well like uh, facebook.com.au right so whatever is your url you can define it and uh, you know you have to define your regex like this so that it matches the url and it it can take the action appropriately if your uh, url list is not matching then uh, basis on the category action that particular action will take effect right not this custom category action will take effect okay so facebook is allowed so although we are blocking social networking category so rest of the websites will be blocked but facebook will be allowed right so this is one so let's say allow list let's give it a name allow list and similarly define block list so right now news category is allowed so let's block cnn right so if you want to block cnn so define a name www.cnn.com then give exact match forward slash right and now you will see that both both these list will be available inside your url filtering profile so if you open up your custom block profile you will get the uh, custom url categories allow and block right so on allow set your action as allow and on block set your action as block okay click okay so right now if you see if you open up cnn.com it will be allowed because in the category we have allowed it right and facebook is blocked right now right so if you go to facebook so it is blocked right now but your uh, cnn is allowed right and you can see this is the sub domain it is referring to so but in our regex we have not uh, considered the sub domain so we need to be make we need to be sure that we going forward we add that star otherwise we won't be able to block this right so this is the current setting now let's wait for this commit to be successful and then we will verify okay it is done so let's go here open up the incognito window again and now type facebook.com and you will see oh it is not matching us hmm social kid it is not matching our regex so we need to check it and uh, similarly cnn so now cnn is getting blocked and you can see the category block list or facebook let me have ww here so now you can see it is getting uh, it is opening up but again it is not uh, loading properly because the rest of the things might be getting blocked right so it depends upon the regex so let's do one thing uh if you go to monitor if you go to url filtering logs here you will be able to see that right so rest of the information has been blocked but few uh because facebook again it tries to uh, communicate with other services right and they are getting blocked but home page is allowed now so if you go here 
so let me first see this cnn so the cnn was blocked right web browsing it was blocked and if you see the category block list right and for allow we don't create any uh, you know any log so you are only able to see these uh, block for the facebook because when it is trying to communicate with other urls they are getting blocked and we have not call uh, these static urls inside our you know inside our uh, allow list right so that is the reason the web page is not loading properly so if you are going to allow all these uh, static urls inside the allow list then you will be able to see that facebook is loading properly right so this is how you can create your allow list you can create your block list i mean those are the custom categories which you can define right and uh, if i talk about the uh, you know if i talk about the flow so what happens uh, you know in a typical web browsing session with url filtering so your tcp handshake always completes right so let me just explain it with the help of the uh, whiteboard so your tcp handshake is always going to be complete in case of url filtering so if your customer is saying that why i have blocked the facebook then why i am able to see the tcp connection getting successful right so this is the expected behavior your tcp three way handshake will complete right because we have seen inside the packet diagnostics as well that tcp three way handshake doesn't contain any layer 7 data so how your firewall is come to know that you know which particular url this user is trying to visit right because after tcp three way handshake if i talk about normal port ad connection we are not talking about the ssl port ad so after three way handshake your client is going to send the http get request right so now what happens your palo alto firewall identifies traffic as web browsing right so the traffic matches an allow rule and forwards the http get to the web server at the same time the firewall compares the url in the get request to the url db the url cache if necessary right so we will see the lookup how it does the lookup so it does the lookup and if firewall finds out that you know this particular uh, if the url is part of the block is part of the block list or let's say block category right or whose category is set to block then palo alto firewall is going to serve a url block page to the web client right and this is what we were getting and firewall is also going to send a reset to the web server to close the session and stop the server from sending the requested web content right so firewall does it on the behalf of the client 
So after it has identified that, oh, I need to block this URL. So it is going to issue one reset packet to the web server so that the web server doesn't respond right on the behalf of the client. And the firewall lets this initial HTTP get request through, which is a expected behavior. So your initial HTTP get always goes through the firewall. In case of port AD, it is the accept, uh, expected behavior. And uh, once the firewall has done the lookup and it has got the uh, category details and whatever action you have defined on that particular category. So accordingly, that action will be performed on, on your you know, URL, right? So this is port AD. What will happen in port 443, right? So what will happen in port 443? So after TCP three-way handshake, your client is going to initiate the client hello. And in client hello, firewall will look out for the SNI field and inside the SNI field, firewall will do the pattern matching on the content of the SNI. So SNI contains uh, Facebook, whatever domain name uh, it is going to visit, right? And basis on domain on that particular domain name, it does the uh, query lookup, right? And if he is a, and if the firewall is able to identify the category, then uh, the firewall check the action on that particular category. And if it is allowed, it will be allowed. If it is blocked, then it will drop the packet, right? It will issue the reset to the server. This is how it works for 443, right? And um, if you are doing the decryption, then you get the more granular control over the websites. Okay. So you can verify all of these things with the help of the packet diagnostics, right? So along with the flow basic, you can have your, uh, you know, uh, you can turn on your uh, flow all, right? So instead of doing, uh, I mean, you know, your, you can set your feature all and you can capture everything and you can see what is going on, how firewall is doing the lookups, uh, you know, how it is uh, dropping the packets because this URL filtering, it takes effect inside the CTD content thread detection, right? So if you recall your packet capture inside CTD, we have apply security profile action, right? So at that particular time we perform the URL filtering, right? And, uh, because this is the layer seven information. So it will be processed by your SP3 engine, right? So SP3 takes care of it. And the important part is your, uh, you know, your lookup, how it performs the lookup, right? That is the important part. So let's discuss that thing. And after that, we will see the entire process of URL filtering in the Palo Alto, how it communicates with the cloud, how it uh, does the election with the cloud, how it selects the crowd, then you know, download the initial seeds, then how it optimize the data plane cache, management plane cache, and then how you can do the troubleshooting if you're facing any problem, right? But before that, let's have a look, uh, let's have a look on the uh, lookup table. So let me just make a space here. So if I talk about pan DB lookup, pan database lookup. So what happens? So let's say we have received the URL. IP address. And SSL certificate in case of Four four three. So you have received the URL request. So first it will go to the firewall and firewall will check the block list. So first firewall always check block list. Then it checks allow list. Then it checks your custom categories. Right? And then it queries the 
डेटा प्लेन कैश राइट देन इट चेक्स विथ मैनेजमेंट प्लेन कैश and then it goes and check with cloud your pan db pan db cloud right and what it, what it is checking it is trying to resolve the category of this particular url right so that appropriate security policy or your decryption policy qs policy captive portal they can be enforced right so report and enforce policy because you can make use of this url filtering inside your decryption as well your normal url uh, filtering profile right there are multiple uses of the url filtering your security policy your ssl decryption let's say i don't i don't want to decrypt the financial institutes right financial websites so from decryption profile you can bypass the financial websites based on url category right then qs policy if you want to apply the qs policy based on the categories and we have kept the portal right so they make use of these url filtering it depends what you have configured so first we always check the block list then we check allow list then we check custom categories then we query our data plane then management plane then your request goes to pan db so let's say you have received any particular uh, url request let's say user is going over uh, abc.com right so based on your url uh, configuration firewall has prepared a block list right it has prepared a block list similarly it has a allow list and you have already defined your custom categories then we have data plane cache then we have management plane cache and last is your cloud so first firewall checks the block list whether this abc.com is inside the block list are we blocking it because Uh, whatever configuration you have done whatever categories you have blocked and all that you know we are going to optimize these list and we will see how we optimize everything right we uh, download the initial seed of the urls from the cloud and then we optimize our databases right so first we are going to check whether it is inside the block list if not then we will check whether it is inside the allow list if not then we will check whether this is defined inside the custom categories right if not then we will check the data plane cache so what is the category of this abc.com right then your query will go to data plane cache and if the entry is still not there then it will go to management plane cache okay data plane when query will query the management plane cache okay tell me what is the category of this url and if that is not a, a known here as well then it goes to cloud and cloud will going to respond you back and then this uh management plane cache and data plane cache will be updated with the correct category of this website so let's say abc.com belongs to social networking right so it will be updated in management plane and in data plane and uh, whatever action you have defined on social networking that action will takes place it is allowed block continue alert override whatever you have defined it that action will trigger and it will uh, you know uh, appropriately the user uh, firewall is going to respond if your category has been resolved as unknown so unknown means i mean this is very new website nobody is aware of it right so if your pan db cloud is saying category is unknown so in that case i am not aware of your category right i'm not aware of your category is totally new website and uh, you know i'm not sure to which particular category it belongs to another thing is your if your category is uh, 
defined as not resolved if we fail to resolve your category in that case the entire traffic to that particular uh, url will be dropped by the firewall because we are failing to resolve the category right we will discuss all these scenarios later on that what happens in unknown what happens in not resolved right and uh, what could be the reason okay so let's say first reason for unknown is website is totally new nobody is aware of it another reason is that initially whatever seed you have received from the cloud that seed is not optimized and you have lost the connection with the cloud so initially 1 million uh, url details have been shared by the cloud to the management plane and management plane then provides 2 lakhs or 1 lakh url details to the data plane cache right and uh, this is not optimized yet because uh, when users will open up the urls frequently according to that uh, visit it, both these cache they get optimized so that it will be best suited for your network right and we have the details for the urls which are frequently visited in your network right so management plane cache coordinates with cloud and updates the category of those urls and then those get populated in the data plane so that we can quickly resolve the category of the url and we can take the actions as soon as possible so once you have lost the connection with the cloud now whatever you have received initially you have that information only and now this url is not there in your database so you need to get the query from the uh, you know you need to forward your query to the cloud so that cloud can respond back with the uh, correct category but since you don't have connectivity with the cloud your requests are not going right and that is the reason uh, you are not able to resolve their categories and in that case you know the entire traffic will be dropped by the firewall because we are not able to resolve the category of this particular url right so we will see that particular thing inside the um, you know inside the uh, troubleshooting so i'll i'll repeat the lookup again first we check the block list of the matching url profile then we check the allow list of the matching url profile right then we check the custom categories that have been defined then we check dp url cache then we check mp url cache and then we go to cloud right to resolve the category of this particular url okay so if your category is not getting resolved then firewall will drop the packets so let's have a look how uh, you know it is done in the pan os so let's make some space here because basis on your category we have defined the rules right we are not defining the rules basis on the urls we are defining the rules basis on the category okay so let's say uh, your user is sitting here right and uh, he has generated a request for url abc.com right and this is your follow all to firewall right so a request will come first it will check block list allow list custom then it is going to check your data plane cache so within dp it is going to evaluate your cache whether there is a hit or no if there is no hit it means the entry is not there inside the database then your request will be forwarded to management plane right and inside the management plane if again there is no hit then your request will be forwarded like this set to unresolved right and then within management plane we will check cloud connection so cloud connection failed we will do this check 
if yes so we will perform another thing if no then my request will go to cloud right and then cloud is going to respond back with the correct url category right so this request comes here and we update the new categories update the new categories in the management plane cache right and if your connection to cloud has failed then set to cloud problem cloud is not reachable so we will land here from this right and if you have received the response so this information is feeded like this right and if we have a hit so this is how it goes back to the data plane if we have a miss then it goes like this if we have a hit if the entry was already there in the management plane cache then your response will go like this and again we have one check here update the new categories whatever response you have received from the management plane cache we are going to update the categories and then it is going to feed back the result to the user so whether the url is allowed or it is blocked so whatever it is whatever is the category on that particular category action we permit the request right and if the hit was already there so we right away go to update the new categories i mean not the new categories we are not going to update this we right away feed back this information to user if it was hit it if the entry was there in the dp cache right so this is the entire flow right uh, to evaluate your cache and uh, this is how uh, you know palo alto firewall tries to ide identify the category of the url and uh, so on the dp a request from the host is received right so which has a role of the fast url filtering cache right so why we have a why we have dp cache why do, why do we have mp cache to resolve the uh, url categories quickly so that action, you know firewall can take the actions as as soon as possible right because if you send your all the request to the cloud it takes time right and it depends upon the communication so we cache few information so that you know we can do the look up as soon as possible and we can enforce the policies accordingly right so let's say your mp it, it depends upon the platform to platform which platform you have so vm platforms mp can store 3 lakh 80000 uh, 3 lakh 80000 urls dp can store uh, i believe uh, 30000 urls so it depends upon the platform to platform and if we talk about the uh, bigger boxes so mp cache can hold 1 million uh, urls and dp cache can hold uh, you know 10 lakhs urls this is how it goes so it depends upon the platform right so if the lookup request can be resolved using the url db in the dp cache so url category is sent back to the requester otherwise the category uh, you know is uh, set to not resolve and our resolving request goes to the mp so upon receiving a uh, url request from the mp uh, you know so mp is going to evaluate the mp uh, cache if there is a miss then it goes to uh, cloud it checks the cloud connection and then from cloud if we get the response we are going to update the new categories then we are going to feed this particular response to the data plane so that data plane can also update the category of this particular url and then uh, we take the action appropriately whatever action you have defined inside the uh, inside over that particular category right so if your category is not resolved right a url will be categorized as not resolved if there is no response from mp url db within 5 seconds 
this is a configurable timeout you can uh, alter it so if we are not going to response uh, we are not going to receive any response from the uh, mp or a db within 5 seconds so my category will be marked as not resolved for that particular url and if the mp fail to connect to the cloud and doesn't have the requested url in its db so category will be marked as not resolved unknown so the urls that are categorized as unknown by the cloud are truly unknown by pan db right we don't know about that that is a new website uh, right and nobody has uh, identified that website yet and another thing is the in uh, the connection to the cloud is not available any unknown url to mp will be classified as unknown to right then uh, we have private ip so a url will be categorized as private ip if it is a single domain if it is an ip address uh, within the range of private ip range if its root domain was not recognized by the cloud right and uh, to store these uh, pan db files we have two or two types of file formats right so one is your csv file another one is your dfs file so csv file provides the detailed information about the url and dfs file contains the image of the tri now tri is your data structure right it is your data structure to uh, store the information right and uh, similarly if i will give you more information about this csv file okay so inside csv file um, we store the information like this your url then whether best match is supported or not then your expiration level then what is the category 1 we have resolved then category 2 and category 3 right so url contains the url only now bm stands for best match right so best match if it is set to 1 if this value is set to 1 so it means this url supports best match means whatever a uh, best match category we are going to identify for this it will support that then if it is set to 3 it means this url doesn't support bm right so let's say uh, cisco.com i know cisco belongs to computer and uh, network info so what would be the category for support.cisco.com right so we will do it on the basis of best match so for cisco it was computer and uh, networking so similarly for support.cisco as well uh, the category will be so, you know computer and networking right then we have so this was point number 2 this was point number 1 then we have expiration level so expiration level it describes the time period this url can be used on the pan device before it is being expired right or uh, the values can be used uh, in the range of 1 to 5 so 1 means it is never going to expire and 5 means 30 minutes after 30 minutes it will expire right the category will expire and then it will query the cloud again then category 1 category 2 category 3 so the first category has the highest priority and the category is a one byte value right second this is not a mandatory field right and again category 3 is not a mandatory field so if i will give you the examples this uh, how your csv file looks like i mean how we are going to store the information in your database so url with one category right so it will be look like this 
let's say this is the sample.com this is your url right so best match support then your expiration level and then your category so each category has a numeric defined to it right so if i talk about uh, real estate it has value of 1 financial services has value of 3 business and economy has value of 4 computer and internet info 5 like this each category has a value associated to it so we record that particular information in the numeric form only right then with two category so let's say this particular url has two categories so 40 and then 60 right here it was only one category right with three category so let's say we have this particular url so if you see they both have same domain right these are the sub domains to this particular main domain now it has three categories so best match supported expiration level category this right so this is how we are going to store the information inside your data fair, database then if you talk about the dfs file so dfs file is the uh, you know try uh, data structure that we are going to build inside your uh, random access memory right it is a compressed binary file and uh, we have initial seed inside it cloud seed inside it and we going to uh, we are going to back up the database inside in a uh, management plane right and uh, it uh, utilities provided to run different functionalities on dfs file right you can convert to csv you can do the lookup stats etc so i mean this is too much information it is not required uh, until unless you do uh, vigorous uh, trouble shooting right okay so um, let's focus about the cache now so if you want to verify these particular entries uh, what will you do what will you check right and before uh, moving to the uh, trouble shooting let's first see how your pan os is going to communicate with the cloud how it is going to communicate uh, with the cloud how it will select the clouds uh, you know how your election process will be done and uh, how you can verify that this particular uh, cloud has been selected and you have received the initial seed from that particular cloud right so we can verify all of this information so let's discuss that so let's say so if i talk about your cloud locations cloud election so inside your panos we have hard coded these locations right so we have one cloud in virginia then we have another cloud in california then we have another cloud in singapore so they are hosted inside aws environment then we have ireland then we have japan okay so these are the clouds which are already hard coded inside your uh, pan os right so whenever uh, you you know activate the li license so election process will be done first to select the nearest cloud and responsive cloud right so your pan os is going to uh, elect any one of the uh, i mean it's going to select any one of these clouds and then it will connect to these clouds and download the initial seed right so if you want to verify this particular uh, you know uh, list 
so there is a directory and uh, inside the file of uh, pan os you can go to opt pan config option pan content pan url cloud list dot txt file and there you will be able to see that so for this you need to take the uh, tech support and then you need to open up your tech support and you will be able to see this particular file and in later lectures i would have uh, shown you this particular file as well so if you go to commit walk through i believe uh, in commit or in uh, uh, i i don't remember the actual actual uh, you know the uh, actual lecture but uh, yeah i have shown that file so if you go through the entire course you will find it out right so what happens your device is going to run the election process if the connection with the current cloud is lost right so after 30 minutes of inactivity the device is going to send a a live message or you can say http post to every load balancer and chooses the one which is responsive right which is going to response first so we are going to choose that particular uh, cloud right and uh, so the url categorization communication between the firewall and the cloud is done using the json messages right so firewall is going to send the json request and then we are going to receive the json response from the cloud and uh, there are types of methods that are currently supported so we have a live method update method classify method test a site method right so a live method is used when connecting or reconnecting to the cloud uh, usually during the cloud election update method in case of no activity to the cloud for 30 minutes or more and then pan device sends an update request to ensure being in sync with the cloud classify method categorizes urls a classify request can batch up to 256 different url request and the response may piggyback updates in the case of pan device doesn't uh, run with the newest url version as the cloud then the last one is your test a site method so categorizes a single url for testing purposes and the response may be piggyback updates if the pan device doesn't run into uh, run with the newest uh, url version as the cloud right so then we have a change request method so provides the user a way to report suspicious miscategorized url then we have cloud stats method to provide the information on the uh, stats right and uh, if you want to see your cloud status so you can simply type the command show uh, url cloud status right so if you type the command show url cloud status it will give you the statistics about your cloud right if your cloud is not connected the the cloud connection will show up as not connected and then we need to troubleshoot that particular uh, connection and you can troubleshoot that particular connection with the help of the tcp dumps because um cloud is communicating uh, with the help uh, from your management plane so management plane related troubleshooting always involves tcp dump right so let me show you that so if you type this command show url cloud status so if you type it show url cloud status so it will give you the detail so license is valid current cloud server is this cloud connection connected cloud mode public url database version on the device is this url database version on cloud is this and last update time url database status good right protocol version protocol version on device and cloud compatibility so if this is not connected in that case you need to take the tcp dump in the management plane so that you can see what is going on why uh, your firewall is not able to communicate with the cloud right so we can do that and uh, if you want to see uh, you know if you want to see this election process so you can see the logs inside the uh, dev server so less mp log dev server dot log right so by doing this less you will be able to see uh, so many uh, you know uh, log messages so you can see here this particular cloud you know this particular cloud list file we have open it up 
then uh, I will show you the election process. So you can see cloud election server list dot URL cloud dot palo alto networks dot com was elected. Right. And you can see from this particular list, I have elected this particular cloud. Rest of them are no. Right. And after electing it, I must have downloaded the initial seed from this particular cloud. Right. So initial seed is nothing but the list of the URLs uh, we provide to the device. Right. So let's say list of the URL. So I'm going to, since this is the VM, so I'm going to provide you, uh, let's say one lakh URL details. So my management plane is going to receive this initial seed. One lakh entries of unique URLs will be provided in my management plane cache. And as per the network activity, my DP cache will be updated right with all those urls so let's say it has 30000 entries this has 1 lakh entries right and if we fail to resolve any category then that request goes to cloud again and cloud provides us that particular uh, url so we are going to purge the old entries which are least uh, required so we purge the uh, database on the basis of least recently used, I mean, which we are not using recently. So we are going to remove all those entries and we are going to update uh, the database with the new entries, right? Similarly, if you want to test the uh, URL inside your uh, management plane, so you can simply type uh, test URL google.com, right? So it will tell you low risk base database and it has expired in the database and this is the same category search engine low risk in cloud database as well this is your management base this is your cloud right and you can see it has expired in zero seconds right so right now if you want to refresh the search uh, i mean you want to refresh the category either a user can uh, you know request for this particular URL, right? So if you want to generate the request for this, so if I will go to my machine, Windows machine. So here, if I will open up the google.com, there you will see that my category expiration time has been refreshed right so if i go to firewall again and if i will run the command again you will see it has been refreshed right so either you can do it from here or you can do it uh, from the command as well right uh, from the uh, cli as well you can run the command and you can uh, you know refresh your database so the number of URLs stored in management plane uh, database varies as a function of the hardware platform, right? So if your platform is 200, VM 50, VM 100, VM 300, VM 500 or PA 220, so it can store up to uh, 3,30,000, 4,80,000, 4,80,000 and 3,80,000 respectively, right? PA 500 can store up to 7,68,000. PA 800 series can store up to 1 million and rest of the boxes, they can store up to 1 million, right? 1 million URLs in their MP cache, okay? Then um, if you wanna get the detailed information about the URL, you can uh, run this command test. Um, URL info and uh, host. You can check it from the cloud and you can check it on the MP clash, MP cache as well. And then just provide your URL uh, google.com and it will give you the detailed uh, information and these are the CSV records, right? What we were discussed earlier. So your URL, then your best match, then your flags, right? Then categories. 
so you will get the detailed information about this right similarly you can get the detailed information about this particular url from the uh, cloud as well and you can type uh, cloud here and uh, this is what you have received from the cloud right so you can do this thing as well and uh, let's say i want to see url category of youtube in my management plane cache test url youtube.com right so i can see that it is streaming media low risk and it is uh, same categories updated in management plane cache as well as in the cloud db um if you want to delete this right if you want to delete this entry you think this is uh, wrong and you need to update it so delete url database url youtube.com right and you have deleted this entry from the database now if you are going to run the test again so you will see that it is not resolved because we don't have this entry inside a database anymore now right now if you want to update this particular uh, entry in the management plane cache either any user visits that particular website or you can do it with the help of the uh, cli as well with the help of the update command right so you can run the update command and you can update the category uh, of that particular uh, you know uh, url so if you are going to run it so request url filtering update url youtube.com wait and you can see categorization request submitted successfully and if you run the test url youtube.com again you will be able to see the category has been identified so if you have deleted the category of any url and uh, you don't have connection to the cloud in that case users going to the youtube.com they will be blocked their traffic will be dropped by the firewall right and when you are deleting the database um, i mean any url in the database please make sure that you don't delete the entire database because this database has been optimized as per your current uh, utilization right so users frequently visiting the uh, websites so accordingly this database has been uh, updated and if you are going to uh, delete the entire database then you know you will uh, you have to connect the connect with the cloud again then you will receive the initial seed and then it will uh, it will optimize again and it will take time right and you will see uh, it has impacted the network performance so never do that okay and uh, if you want to see the um, counters so you can run this particular command debug device server pan url db show stats right and you can see so how many resolved by your management plane cache how many queries got resolved from the cloud db so current read index current write index right so you will get all the statistics about the management plane cache right so you can see that similarly um uh what else you can check i mean um you can check the component of the device server right you can uh, debug the device server set url and then component like uh, all basic cloud ha match start right so you can select the component and you can see then you can trace um, you can trace the device server daemon to troubleshoot the uh, you know url filtering based issues so you can run this particular command debug software trace uh, device server right and then you can see what is going on because device server is communicating to update this particular uh, cache right so if you are facing any problem then you can enable the traces as well moving to the, moving towards the data plane cache so now i told you data plane cache is more costly so it stores less number of urls right so for vm100 if i talk about it stores only 10000 right and for elite boxes uh, it stores uh, 1 lakh urls right 
so data plane cache is a very expensive memory so you know uh, we store only uh, frequently visited uh, you know uh, frequently visited urls in that particular cache right similarly you can check the supervisor uh, process logs as well because supervisor process is going to initialize your uh, dp cache right so you can run this command uh, grep pattern url dp uh, log supervisor dot log right in case of hardware but in case of vm uh, all the logs are inside the management plane so you can run grep pattern url right and uh, if it is capital so you can define your pattern what you are looking for and then you can go to your directory and then you can select the log file you want to see supervisor.log so nothing is there right now let me just filter it out based on url and you can see right so url cache startup url cache startup so this uh, url you know initialization of dp cache is done by the supervisor daemon okay so you can see whether this uh, daemon is done initialization has been done or not right if you are facing problems inside the dp uh, cache okay then um you know so the uh, categorization uh, the categorization uh, which you have requested right so url in the data path is, is part of the pen task processes right and similarly you can see the pen task log for the uh, url filtering as well and uh, if you are going to run the packet diagnostics for all right there you will see all of this uh, things happening right and we will run it and uh, i'll i'll provide you the log file uh, by running it right we can run it and uh, i can show you that and uh, if you want to see the entire dp cache so you can run the command show running url cache all and it will provide you the details about the uh, dp cache so if you want to see the dp cache show running url cache all right so your file has been written into the dp url db.log file right and this particular file is uh, stored inside the uh, option dpfs var log dp log file right or you can open it up so inside the hardware if you have this if you have a different uh, i mean if you have a dedicated data plane then you need to go inside the dp log otherwise it is mp log in vm so dp url right dot log file and you will see the details of the data plane cache so these are the entries currently available in your data plane cache right so this is how it stores the information and uh, you know it updates itself so you can see it is in the csv format only right so it is in the csv format only and uh, it gets optimized uh, you know uh in one or two days or you can say when your users they visit the websites frequently so this cache gets optimized accordingly and uh, that is the reason we suggest that never delete you know any databases like db or dp database or mp database do not delete that it will create the problem then uh, if you want to test a uh, single request you can issue a command debug data plane test url resolve path right it is going to uh, imitate the data path that is you know your request goes to the uh, from dp to management plane then from the cloud and then you have got the response from the cloud your management plane has been updated then your data plane has been updated so you will be able to see that right and uh, if you want to see the entries inside your uh, data plane whether that particular entry resides inside your data plane or not for any particular url so you can run the command uh, show running url right and uh, then you can provide the value 
right? So google.com search engine low risk and it is going to expire in this particular time, right? And uh, if you want to get the detailed information about it, so show running URL, just type info to this command and it will give you the detailed information about this, right? About this Google itself. And uh, if you want to clear the uh, entry from the DP, clear URL cache, URL google.com, right? So this has been deleted from the DP cache. And if you are going to run it again, show running URL uh, google.com. Now you will see that it is not in the URL cache, right? So it is not there in the data plane cache. It has been deleted. So uh, this is how you take the action. So we delete only, uh, you know, uh, miscategorized URLs, and then we update the request. Either a user can initiate the traffic so that the category can be updated, uh, you know, properly, or you can request it from the uh, device itself, right? Okay. So you can request URL filtering update and then you can uh, provide the details and it will update it, right? And if you wanna see the counters, uh, the counters associated with the uh, URL filtering, so you can simply just go to uh, show counter global filter delta yes, and then you can match URL. So you can see what are all the counters which are getting modified right now, right? So if I will initiate the traffic, let's see what are all the counters which are getting modified for URL category. So if I will open up any website, let's say I wanna go to um, Wikipedia. I think I have typed the wrong URL. So let's first open up the Google and then from Google we will search it. So from Google, let's search Wikipedia. And now if you want to see the counter movement, you can run the command again and you will see CTD packet hold URL, CTD URL block, right? Sessions blocked by URL filtering, uh, number of URL logs, number of URL content logs, the number of packets dropped because of waiting for URL category request in SSL proxy, right? URL DB request, number of URL database request, number of URL reply, right? And uh, the session state was changed when receiving a URL response. URL session not in wait. So session is not waiting for URL and URL decoder triggered, right? So all these sessions, all these uh, counters, they are associated with the uh, URL filtering and they gives you a detailed uh, uh, you know, output whenever you're doing testing or you're troubleshooting the problems related to uh, URL filtering. And uh, if we talk about the PANDB HA mode, so in active active, that is your active active mode. So no synchronizing across the pair, right? No syncing across pairs. URL vendors must, must match. Device must be suspended first before switching the vendors. And similarly for active passive, your cache sync across every eight hours. Your URL vendors must match and device must be suspended before switching the vendors. So the only difference is in active active, your cache doesn't get synchronized, but yeah, in uh, active passive, we synchronize the cache in every eight hours, right? Uh, in active active, both the devices, they, con they connect to cloud services independently, right? And uh, in active passive, the URL, uh, the passive element doesn't connect to the cloud and gets the update from the active device only, right? 
and uh, you can see that your ha is not coming up because the vendor is different right on one device you have enabled the pan db on another device you have enabled the uh, bright cloud so your uh, you know uh, ha will not come up similarly you can submit the change request either from the log details or you can just go to the http url filtering.poloaltonetworks.com test a site and from there you can submit the details right let me show you that so if you open up uh, stdp and if you type url filtering dot follow to networks dot com slash test a site right so if you open it up um, okay they are not using a sign dot okay it is taking https request and it is a http service so url filtering dot polo alto networks dot com so if i will remove this thing and if i will remove https yeah so test a site okay you can provide the url and you can see which category it belongs to let's say youtube.com you can search and then they will give you the details right so if you want to request change you can request the change from here and you can provide the details okay now coming to bright cloud so bright cloud is also similar to it so we will discuss about the connection flow rest of the commands will remain same because in the connection lookup few things are different in bright cloud we have a few more options available in bright cloud db so if your database is bright cloud then uh, first you need to activate the bright cloud uh, license for using this particular database right and uh, after activating it uh, you know you need to uh, you should be aware of the connection flow i mean how we are going to perform the lookup in the bright cloud so it goes like this i mean you know we have a inside the data plane cache so inside your data plane we first check for allow and block list right and we check for custom categories then it goes to dp cache that is your url cache inside dp right and it stores up to so the only thing is it can store more urls 40000 to 1000 urls right then from data plane it goes to management plane and inside management plane we have a dynamic cache right so inside mp you have a dynamic cache which can store up to 1 million urls right so the best part is uh, it also has bloom filter so if you have enabled the bloom filter so what what it can do it can store the information inside your hard drive of the palo alto firewall so it creates the uh, database inside the hard drive where you can store details of 20 million urls so 
so this is the best thing about it i mean you know it it reduces the queries to the cloud servers and with the help of the bloom filter you can check the disk cache hard drive cache and this cache can store up to 16 million urls right and from disk it goes to url db inside the hard drive if you don't have this information and uh, if this in, this information is not there so first my request comes to the data plane then it goes to the url cache then it goes to uh, bloom filter from bloom it will go to uh, you know sorry from from bloom it will go to disk cache if uh, entry is not there then it goes to url db and if nothing is there then it goes to dynamic cache right and then dynamic cache coordinates with cloud if information is not there so this is how it communicates so the only advantage is you have 20 million urls details inside your device itself so if you have lost the connection with the cloud you can still resolve 20 million urls categories and uh, you know there are less chances that you are going to drop the traffic unlike pan db so in pan db we don't have this particular option available so this is the benefit of bright cloud right so if you want to uh, take the packet diagnostics you can take it right you can visit any particular website and you can allow your filters accordingly right i will do one thing i will take the uh, packet diagnostics for url filtering and i will upload it in the course itself but i will request you to uh, run the packet diagnostics for uh, any given website and you can see the packet processing how it is going on right you can turn the uh, feature all right no no need to go for the uh, you know no need to go for the flow basic turn the feature all and uh, get the entire uh, diagnostic results filter out your uh, results and then you can you know verify the processing right so and if you want to do the troubleshooting for bright cloud so i will upload the commands as well right because syntax will change for bright cloud if you are using the bright cloud then your syntax is going to change then uh, we have a safe search option in url filtering so safe search uh, uh, you know i mean it uh, it is it is the setting which allows you to enforce the uh, filters to enforce the filters so that they can prevent adult images to be coming up in your search queries right so you can uh, have a safe search option for your search queries as well right because url filtering is blocking the uh, websites but if user is going to do a google search for adult uh, uh, you know images or something like that if you want to block that or if you want to block uh, you know adult uh, images or other categories so you can enforce the safe search so the only thing is um, you know if you enable the safe search you need to make sure that your browser is also uh, following the uh, safe search restrictions right if that setting is not enabled in the browser then what will happen all the queries to the uh, you know if you are going to perform all the queries inside the search engine they will be blocked by the firewall right so you want to make sure that uh, firewall is all, i mean the browser is also uh, having those settings updated in the browser right so if i go to uh, here if i go to device uh, right now i can search anything right so i can search anything uh, nothing has been restricted in the google search right if you want to do that just go to device right just go to device log in into your device and configure the safe search
Okay, so we have logged in into the firewall. Uh, you can go to objects. You can go to URL filtering profile. You can open up your profile and you can go to URL filtering settings. Here you see safe search enforcement, right? And then you can click on okay and you can commit the change, right? And uh, similarly, go to browser, go to browser settings and search for safe and make sure that it is in accordance to your firewall policy. So just search for safe. So just go to safe browsing, it's enabled. And uh, one more thing I wanna check, safe search. Just a minute. So I think it is enabled. Okay, let's wait for this. Commit status. Okay, so after doing this commit, uh, you need to update your browser settings, right? So just go to google.com preferences. And from there, you need to update your search settings so that it matches your company policy. I turn on safe search, save. Okay. So after doing that, now if uh, you do search for explicit content. So right now, if you do any search in the Google, it will, it says that it has been blocked, right? Because um, your search results have been blocked because your search settings are not in accordance with your company policy. To continue, please set safe search to strictest setting if you are logged in into your account, right? So you need to log in into your Google account. You need to sign in first, and then you need to turn on your safe search, right? And uh, once your safe search is uh, enabled, then it will start working so it will automatically your firewall will uh, you know filter out all the results it will remove the explicit content uh, from the search right and it will just give you the filtered out content for your search queries right so you need to sign in first and then uh, it will take your preferences because right now i'm not signed it into this so if you uh, see my all the uh, search has been blocked by the firewall so if I will do anything here, if I will go to Wikipedia as well, the search has been blocked, right? So you need to update your uh, Chrome settings and then only it will start working with the firewall. So this is your safe search. Then uh, another setting we have inside the firewall. So if you go to custom URL profile, if you go to URL filtering setting, now these HTTP header, uh, you know, loggings. So user agent referrer and X forwarded for. So we use this particular feature to determine the actual uh, user IP, right? So if you are a behind a proxy device or if any device is doing the NAT translation of your source IP, and if you wanna forward your uh, actual client IP, then you can uh, select this particular X forwarded for. It will, you know, in the HTTP header, it will log your, uh, any the source client IP. Right, so that so that destination device it can be aware uh, with whom it is making the connection. Right, so this is how uh, we can use these header as well, and uh, then user agent. So uh, another thing is for you know user identification. So these headers we generally use for uh, the user identification or who is referring to you. Right, if we have a devices which are doing proxy or doing the NAT translations. So if you wanna identify your actual user, if you wanna identify their locations, right? So you can use this particular setting. So that's it inside the URL filtering. And uh, 
I will request you to run the packet diagnostics for URL filtering. I will also run it. I will upload the, uh, you know, uh, packet diagnostic file. So for URL filtering, so for it is very simple. I mean, you need to just do one thing. Just go to any particular website, identify, identify the source and destination IP addresses, and then apply the filter and set feature to all, right? So this is your firewall. So go to any server. Let's say you're going to Facebook. So perform uh, NS lookup, get the IP, right? And then apply the uh, diagnostics and then you will be able to see all the features, all entire processing between the source and the destination. Make sure if you're doing the NAT, you apply your filters correctly. Otherwise you won't be able to catch the stream. That's it.